行政長官質詢。The meeting for the chief executive's question time is now adjourned. 會例行會議。The regular council meeting now commences. Addresses. The Chief Secretary for Administration will address the Council on the Government Minute in response to the report of the Public Accounts Committee Number 68A. Chief Secretary for Administration, President, late on the table today is the Government Minute (GM) responding to the report Number 68A of the Public Accounts Committee (PAC). First of all. I welcome the submission of the report number 68A by the Chairman of PAC to the Legislative Council on 17th January, which offered comments on two chapters on the Directors of Audits Report, namely, government support and monitoring of charities and provision of District Council funds for community involvement projects. I'm also grateful for the time and effort that the Chairman and members of the PAC devoted to investigating these subjects. The government accepts PAC's various recommendations and set out in detail the specific responses of the relevant bureau and departments in the GM. Now, I would like to briefly address the major concerns of the PAC. First, on government support and monitoring of charities. The Law Reform Commission (LRC) published its report. On the regulation of charitable organizations and charitable fundraising activities, in which some of the recommendations had far-reaching implications on the operation and development of charities in Hong Kong, and the issues involved were very complicated. While the recommendations of LRC touch upon the duty and responsibilities of a number of BNDs, the Home Affairs Bureau (HAB) has been assigned to coordinate inputs from the relevant BNDs and actively following up to coordination with a view to formulating response to LRC recommendations for the government overall considerations as soon as possible. Meanwhile, HAB is coordinating with relevant departments to explore feasible administrative measures. By making reference to the recommendations in the LRC report, the audit report, and the PAC report, with a view to enhancing the transparency of charitable fundraising activities and safeguarding the rights and interests of donors, these measures include, among others, making public the relevant financial information of charitable fundraising activities granted with a license or a permit, enhancing the 1823 hotline and the charitable fundraising activities webpage. On the GovHK portal, <coughs> reviewing and enhancing the reference guide on best practice for charitable fundraising activities issued by the Social Welfare Department, and stepping up promotion efforts and encouraging charities to follow such practices. On the other hand, the Inland Revenue Department (IRD) enhanced the periodic review of TEXM charities. With effect from January 2018, IRD will conduct the first review of all newly recognized tech exam charities two years after its tech exam status is recognized. For existing tech exam charities, the review cycle has been shortened from at least once every four years to once every three years. Currently, under Section 88 of the Inland Revenue Ordinance, IRD's role is to consider whether the organization is within the legal meaning of charity. IRD is seeking legal advice from the Department of Justice to explore there is room to enhance its work within its existing legislative framework. Besides, Lands Department, Lands G generally accepts the comments and recommendations made by the PAC on the monitoring of charities under lease. Regarding PAC's recommendation to review and improve the protocol on private treaty grants issued in 2014, Lands. D issued a refined protocol in the first quarter of 2018. Lands D have also completed phase one of the stock hacking exercise for those private treaty grants (PTGs) granted at nil, nominal, or concession premium during the period from 1st January 2016 to 31st December 2017, and will continue to undertake the stock hacking exercise. In phases and share the findings relevant BNDs, subjective priority of other tasks in hand and resources available, with a view to reminding the relevant BNDs of their monitoring roles in respect of the relevant PTGs, taking into account the responsibilities under the protocol. Besides, Landsty promulgated a new set of internal guidelines in May 2017, under which Landsty will recommend that the concerned sponsoring BNDs. Impose submission of audited accounts 
and no distribution of profits requirements when processing new PTGs or lease modification or lease extension of existing PTGs. Lancaster will request justifications if the recommendations is not accepted. When applications for these modifications for these renewal are received for the 11 PTGs named in the audit report, excluding the three virtually unrestricted leases, LensD will process the applications by applying the set instruction. As to the PAC recommendation on the regulation of Chinese temples, HAP and the Chinese Temple Committee CTC have actively followed them up and taken measures to enhance the transparency of the operation of its temples. In respect of the issue of renewing the expired delegation agreements of the two delegated temples, CTC re-entered into an agreement with one of the delegated organizations in December 2017. The CDC Secretary had also repeatedly met with the other delegated organization. The two parties are now finalizing the details with a view to re-entering the agreement as soon as possible. And on the provision of District Council funds for community involvement projects, with regard to the provision of District Council Fund for Community Involvement Projects, Section 68 of the District Council Ordinance provided that a District Council DC may make standing orders for regulating its procedures and those of the committees. The Home Affairs Department's HAD has provided a model text of standing orders to 18 DCs for reference. Such arrangement has struck a balance between maintaining consistency in DCs making outstanding orders while allowing flexibility to adopt procedures that can cater for the actual situation of district different districts. On the implementation of CI projects, HAD had completed a manual on the use of district council funds to provide a further guidance to DCs. The HAD manual covers different areas such as the funding coverage, vetting criteria, payment arrangements, monitoring mechanism, etc. On the basis of the HAD manual, each DC has devised its own detailed guidelines for the implementation of CI projects and the district guidelines must comply with the principles set out in the HAD manual. In response to the recommendations in the audit report, HAD has further enhanced the arrangements on the implementation of CI projects. For example, providing DCs with guidelines to facilitate the review of the list of designated non-government organizations, producing analysis of CI projects for DCs to facilitate the management of DC funds. Reminding DC secretaries that a proper evaluation system should be put in place to monitor the effectiveness of CI projects. And reminding DC secretary that DC members, co-opt members, or district staff who do not have an interest in the organization or the project under evaluation should conduct visits or attend the activities on a random basis. Turning to declaration of interests. HAD has all along formulated provision on the avoidance of conflict interests under the model text of standing orders on the basis of the guidelines for a two-tier reporting system devised in collaboration with the Independent Commission Against Corruption ICAC. All DC members declared interest according to the standing orders and the declarations have been uploaded to DC website for public viewing. The first clear declaration required DC members to report their personal interest within one month from the commencement of the term. The second tier declaration required that any DC member who has pecuniary or other interest to any uh, matter handled by the DC concerned or has links with a benefited party or a potential benefited party, including matters on tender, quotation of DC funds, must, as soon as practicable, after being aware of it, declare such to the DC concerned prior to the discussion of the relevant matter. In addition, the HAD manual provides a further guidance on the second tier declaration requiring that DC members shall make declarations on any conflict of interest which may be actual, potential, or perceived. They should also refrain from ha having business dealings with any party associated with projects financed by DC funds. 
The two-tier declaration system is well established. DC members are familiar with the system and have made declarations accordingly. In consideration of PACs and the audit's recommendations, HD has further enhanced the relevant arrangements and system, including the following. A. HID has, in consultation with the ICAC, formulated guidelines on the other declarable interests under the first tier declaration to facilitate DC members in making the first tier declaration more comprehensively and accurately. For example, under these guidelines, DC and the committee members holding up positions in the implementation parties of CI projects are regarded as other declarable interests and should be declared. B. Regarding second tier declarations, HGT had requested DC secretaries to remind at every meeting or during circulation papers members to declare interest and the chairpersons to make rulings on the interest declared and to record such rulings in the minutes of meetings. Under the current practice, the minutes of meetings are uploaded to DC website for public inspection. C. HGT has worked with DC secretaries to devise good practice in handling declaration of interests and making rulings at meetings by DC committee and working group chairpersons. The good practice have been distributed to DC for reference. President, I would like to thank the chairman and all members of the PAC again for the effort and guidance. Relevant departments will strictly follow their responses in the GM and implement the improvement measures as soon as possible to ensure the proper use of public funds and compliance with the original policy objectives. Thank you, President. Dr. Honorable Priscilla Leung will address this council.